What's going on guys? In this video I'm going to talk about the ride plate bulletin that Riva put out a couple of years ago pertaining to the 2022 and up ride plates for Sido. Uh, and basically what the bulletin says is some ride plates, as you can see here, were kind of late or cast in a way where the bottom of the ride plate does not kind of bell up at the very end compared to what it would look like on a good ride plate, which would cause a loss of top end speed. Now it's not a design flaw because it doesn't affect the ski in any way, and it certainly doesn't keep a ski from hit hitting its maximum advertised speed limit. But if you're the kind of person that has a speed override or you have a tune or something like that, this is something that could affect you. Now I did this service on my ski last year when I bought it, and I was able to gain it was one or two miles an hour, I believe. But the bigger gain for me was the IBR stops. I did make a video on that already. This is just a follow-up to that other video I made explaining how I got to the speeds I have on this ski with very minimal work. And this is one of those things I'm gonna focus on today. So uh, quite a few people did reach out to me after I posted the last video asking to go more in detail about this. Um, and I'm going to show you how to, one, identify if your ski has an affected ride plate, and two, how to fix it for basically free. Reva does offer a service where you can remove your ride plate and send it in to them, and they will fix it for you, which is perfectly fine. The downside is that, you know, the ride plate on a sea is pretty difficult to get out. Uh, there is coolant that's being passed through here. It's part of the cooling system. You have to take out the jet pump. You have to take out uh, the cooling system. The hoses from the inside. You have to remove the intake grate. There's a bunch of hoses, bolts, and there's a bunch of uh, marine sealant that's holding the ride plate in. So, total nightmare to remove. And then on top of that, you still have to pay to ship it to Riva. And then, of course, you have to pay to have the service done as well. So... I've seen some people pay north of eight, nine hundred dollars, including the shipping and everything, plus the time it takes to remove the ride plate, and then you got to refill the cooling system and everything. For one to two miles an hour, it's really not worth going through all that effort, especially when you can do it yourself. So, the first thing I'm going to do is crawl under the ski, and I'll show you how you can identify if your ride plate is affected or not. All right. So before we get under there, I do want to show what you need in order to measure this. One, you're gonna need some kind of source of light. It does not have to be a stand light like this one here. It could be a flashlight, doesn't really matter. Something that shines light. And then you have to have a straight edge and it has to be a true straight edge. I know some people will use a uh, level, a plastic level. The problem with that is that the plastic isn't always straight and it's gonna throw off your readings. You'll never get the balance or anything right here. So ideally a flat edge piece of metal will work perfect for this. This is way overkill, but it's the closest thing I could find. Again, I did this service last year. I have no idea where my straight edge is. We're in the middle of a house renovation, so this will work for now. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is either, if your ski's on a trailer, you're gonna wanna pull the ski back. Usually if you have a person to help you, you can kinda just lift the size and pull it backwards, uh, or have the ski on a cart. And I'll show you why. I have another ski out here that's on a trailer. And if you look at it, there's no way you're gonna be able to shave the ride plate when it's over the trailer. So you really kind of have to pull the ski back. I've done multiple ride plate modifications with the ski on the trailer, and you just have one person that kind of pulls here, another person over there. Obviously make sure your winch is loosened, but you wanna pull the ski back just so you have access to that ride plate. And you can see here, I have another ski on a cart here and there's full access to the ride plate. You really need full access to the ride plate in order for this to work. All right, so here is the ride plate on my ski and you can see where I did the adjustment already. The front of the ride plate here is where you're going to want to rest your flat edge, uh, just like that. You don't want to balance it on the ride plate itself. You want to keep the flat edge right where those those mounting bolts go for your intake rate. And then once you do that with your light on the other side, you'll see where the ride plate kind of sits. And you can see, I can see light through the gap here. Um, and I'm going to put this down so I can explain it, but with the straight edge up, you can kind of see how it very slightly slopes up at the end. Now, before I did the adjustment on my ride plate, mine 
almost went perfectly straight out, but there was a bulge in the middle here. So it went straight out, bulged down a little bit, went back up, and it was straight out. So my ride plate was very, very affected. Um, I'm not exactly sure what speed impact it had because I did this before I even had the ski tuned, before I had the override done. So um, the last minute, the last adjustment that I made, I, I noticed around a one or two mile an hour gain. So that's essentially all we're doing here to find out if your ride plate is affected or not. Rest it up against the front there, and then you want to look for light. If you see no light at all, if it looks like that, that means your ride plate is affected. Or if you notice some light in the back, no light in the middle, and then no light in or some light in the, the very back, that means you also have that bulge and you probably have to make an adjustment on yours as well. So now that you know what to look for, you can see it on your ski and you can also see it. Service bulletin, I'll post this in the video as well so you guys can see it. Uh, it, now you know what to look like or what to compare to for your ski. So the next thing we're going to do is make the adjustment. I'll show you how to do it for completely free. What you need is a cheap belt sander. I, ideally, I would use an old one or just buy a cheap one online. I'll link one to Amazon. As you just really do not want to use one that you use every day or a good quality one because you're going to be shaving metal here and if you get metal shavings, into your the motor on this thing, you're just it's just gonna burn out. It's not gonna last at all. I've used this probably two or three times on different skis, and I can certainly hear it affecting the motor already. So you definitely do not want to use a good one. So this is just a cheap sander. The grit, you want to use something that's fairly abrasive. I believe this is 80 grit. You don't have to polish this, so you don't have to kind of go up the rings of your your grittiness or the abrasiveness. If you just start off with an 80 grit, that's what you can finish with. Um, there's no need to polish it or anything like that when this is all finished. So go with the most ab abrasive pad that you can find. And I would get one or two of them because you will burn through it rather quickly. So that's pretty much it. That's all you're really gonna need for this. Just a cheap belt sander and the most abrasive pad you can find. So let's go ahead and we'll crawl under and I'll show you what needs to be done to make this adjustment. All right, so right off the bat, you don't want to be an idiot like me. You definitely want to wear some prote eye protection and ideally a mask. There's a lot of fine metal shavings that are going to come off. I already did this, so I'm really just going to do a couple passes, so I'm not too worried about it. But you will have a lot of aluminum shavings everywhere, so definitely make sure you have some eye pro and some mask. So really what we're going to do here, this is the technique that I use and it worked perfectly fine. We're just going to take the belt sander and work from the front and just going to work it back. And we're going to put a lot of emphasis on the rear of it because we want that that kind of belling up. And we want that shaving to go kind of ramp up at the very end. That's what's going to help the ski plane out and that's going to help you get some more top end speed. It's going to push the ski out of the water essentially. So. I'm just going to do three passes on here, I'll show you what it looks like, and we'll go from there. Alright, so you saw there, this, is, this pad is wide enough that I can do this entire ride plate in three passes, just one, two, three, three columns essentially. But you want to get it to the very edge of the ride plate on both ends right before it starts to curve up on the sides. And you want to take it slow. Uh, this is one of those things where you want to, I would say, cut for a minute or two, take another measurement, and then go from there. If you take off too much material, you're just going to affect the ride quality. But even worse, if you puncture through the bottom of the ride plate, like I said earlier, this is your this is your radiator essentially. There's coolant in here. So if you shave off too much material, you can puncture it and you can cause leaks. Um, now to be fair, this, this the ride plate is very, very, very thick. You would have to be probably shaving here for two to three hours in order to get through it and cause any leaks. But it's still the same thing. You want to take the process very, very slow, cut for two minutes, take another measurement, see how much more you need to shave off, if you need to shave off any more and then repeat the process that way. 
All right, and really that's that's pretty much all there is to it. This is something you can do in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. Very easy to do with the ride plate still on the ski. There's no need to take it off and send it off to anybody to do the work for you. Just need a flashlight, straight edge, and a cheap belt sander. You can have this entire process done. It's an easy one to two miles per hour gain if your plate is affected. But the best part is, this is one of those modifications where after you do the modification, there's no need to do anything else. Like I mentioned before, if you do that IBR stop grind, you have to get the whole system recalibrated. If you do any other mechanical modifications like an air intake or whatever, you're not going to notice any gain unless you have the ski tuned. This is one of those things where you can do the mod and that's it. There's nothing else you need to do. It's just grind away, check it, take the ski out and ride. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. If you guys have any questions at all, if there's something I said that didn't make any sense or whatever, or you just need clarification, just leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.